Each day at Wesley Meadows is a new opportunity to serve older adults and reimagine retirement living. It is the heart of their mission that inspires their team to provide the kind of fun atmosphere and care residents would want for themselves. Experience the warm spirit and faith-based difference of Wesley Meadows. Call 662-429-2070 and schedule your visit today. Hello, and welcome to the Real Hernando podcast presented to you by Wesley Meadows Retirement Community and produced by Shelborough Productions and SRP Studios. Uh, This podcast is created to highlight Hernando, Mississippi community by sharing the stories of its business owners and community leaders. We hope these stories help strengthen the fabric of the city we love near and dear, Hernando, the real Hernando. Please follow us at therealhernando.com for all channels and social media platforms. I am your host, Derek, and today we are speaking with Brandon Gustafson, uh, co-owner and projects manager for Gustafson Properties Custom Homes, North Mississippi's custom home builder. You can find um, his office at 1230 Monteith Avenue. That's right. Sweet B right here in Hernando. And for more information, go to GustafsonProperties.com. Let me spell Gustafson <laughs> for the audience. G-U-S-T-A-F-S-O-N Properties.com. That's right. All right, Brandon, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. So quick little context. You reached out, I believe, um, and asked uh, or wanted to meet to see if it would be possible for you to be on the podcast. Yeah. I said, absolutely, let's meet. Only that was like nine months ago. <laughs> it was a while back, yeah. And we finally made it happen. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, there was some reasons for cancellation, and then um, my journey in creating a studio began this summer, which I was like, all right, I don't – you know, I knew that your interview would be better for studio, better fit for studio rather than doing it in your office. Yeah. Because I had to do everything remotely. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, Brandon, just, I think I said, Hey, I just got a room. My studio should be ready in a month. And I was absolutely crazy thinking (laughs) it would take a month. Uh, it's, it's now several months and still work in progress, but, but well worth it. It's a, it's it's an awesome studio. I I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and uh, New Year, man, 2023. That's right. Let's do this thing. Um, all right, great. So we finally made it happen. And um, we want to talk about you, obviously, to you know introduce you to the community more. But then, of course, talk about the business as well. Yeah. Um, and I know your family is very much integrated in your story, obviously, personally. Yeah. But yeah. also <laughs> your business as well. So, But let's start with uh, where you're from. Well, I'm a... Um I'm, I'm from Hernando. I've, I've been here my entire life. Um, <clears throat> I was um, I, I live on uh, out actually in the uh, Moortown area down at the end of Fog Road. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I grew up out there. Um, we we grew up on a little street out there in the county, um, Carolyn Drive, and. Um, I lived there for the first 16 years of my life, moved into the city limits. And then uh, when my wife and I got married, I couldn't wait to get back out into the woods. So <laughs> we just we, we bought a piece of property down there. And uh, again, towards Fog Road. Yeah, okay. right around the corner from where I grew up. So and what um, is the name? If you go past Fog, there's another name out there, Arroyo. And what is it? Um, oh, well, it's on the where we live is on the south side of Fog Road. So if you take oh, okay. if you take uh, three hundred four straight mm-hmm. out to Fog Road, go south on Fog. We go all the way down to where it forks, and basically, if you go left, it takes you to the boat ramp. Right, right, right is Pleasant Hill okay. Drive where we live. So. Okay, great. Because yeah. I have some friends that live. <clears throat> Further out, commerce past fog, and it takes you into a different section that has a different name, but is still considered Hernando. I can't, for the life of me, remember this, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, like subdivision or uh, uh no, no, or like a, just a different town name, Eudora, Eudora, yeah, yeah that's what, yeah, thank you, yeah. So we're kind of, I kind of live between Hernando and Eudora. Man, so. I, you saved me because I felt like I was sinking, <laughs> <laughs> no, digging us into a hole here, but uh, thank you, yes, yeah, that, yeah. that place, but um. Okay, um, let's talk about your family. Um, married kids? Uh, yes. Uh, so I got married in 2007. Uh, my wife is Angel Gustafson, um, and we have had uh, four boys since then. Uh, can't 
can't can't have girls, so I don't know. That's a handful. Of <laughs> yeah, boys. yeah. But we make jokes about it a lot because you know I tell everybody I'm I'm kind of building my own framing crew. There you and, go. <laughs> so what are the yeah. age? What are the uh, ages? Eleven, um, seven, and six. Fixing to be uh, seven, and um, and then we have a younger, uh, uh, uh-huh. uh, well, a uh, uh, middle boy that we actually lost. Uh, 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 few years ago so oh, i'm sorry uh, to hear that yeah, yeah yeah but uh but yeah we still include him he's still a you know he's a part of our family part of our um yeah. our life and uh and yeah it definitely changed our lives so i couldn't uh, imagine yeah yeah I but couldn't imagine <clears throat> yeah but yeah it, it's uh it, it's uh it, it's awesome man having mm-hmm. having you know, house full of boys is uh, into sports. Yeah, so my oldest is into soccer. My uh, two little ones are more into baseball. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Baseball, that's a dying breed right there. I know, and and we talked about that a lot because when I was younger, the uh, my wife and I talked about it because when I was younger, the uh, you know baseball was just kind of what you did, mm-hmm. and like all these other sports have started to, you know take take the lead i guess you would say uh like my oldest he he didn't really you know care all that much about baseball he always kind of went to where soccer so when the little ones started to play baseball uh it was kind of exciting to get back out there in the fields and uh yeah because when i grew up it was all about wiffle ball yeah me in the town you know we didn't have phones and all that stuff yeah yeah so we were like forced to go outside you know like get out of here yeah so this uh, buddy of mine his name was ken bunker Mm-hmm. Just had the right kind of lawn, had a fence. Mm-hmm. So that was like the home run mark. He actually had two trees like on each corner of his lot, just coincidentally. So those were like the foul poles. It was fun. Yeah. Man. Had a great time yeah. playing that wiffle ball, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, uh, you know, uh, but it takes a situation like that to to have fun where basketball and soccer, yeah. you know, get a hoop. <laughs> you're full, you know, you're playing basketball all day by yourself. You can just do it alone. Yeah. You know, so I think that's why those sports probably are a little more popular. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So um, <clears throat> you were a firefighter here for the Hernando Fire Department. What uh, timeline was that? So I actually got hired on in, at Hernando in 2009. <clears throat> My brother and I really – um, it, it was really just kind of a spontaneous career choice at the time. Uh, a couple of years after my wife and I had been married, you know, I just got to talking about being interested, maybe seeing what that was about. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, we, we, we started volunteering. Um, and then I got um, I got hired on in 2009 at Hernando. He got hired on a year later in Horn Lake and then, um, I was at Hernando for about six and a half years, and um, and that's mm-hmm. that's about the time frame I was there. So. Do you know Chris Camp? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Okay. Him. I don't know what his. Uh, you know what? Actually, uh, he's a friend of mine. Um, that's why I'm wearing his shirt. He's motivated with Coach Camp as his platform. Yeah, he used to be a firefighter. Yeah. I think it was Memphis. I think that's why. I got you. Uh, if you're listening, Chris, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm screwing you up here, but. Uh, what was that experience like? I mean, six years, it sounds like maybe you, it was something that you had enough time with and wanted to move on. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, when um, when my youngest boy was born, um, I, I left and I, I, they, we had already kind of discussed that I was going to be moving on after that. Um I just wanted to be at home more with the family. Mm-hmm. Um, being a firefighter was an awesome experience because it's um, you, you get to, you know, kind of be part of that brotherhood. You, you definitely get to experience, you know, mm-hmm. a, a different um, different events that that you don't typically deal with with the normal uh, yeah, career P- path. <laughs> PTSD level. Yeah. Experiences. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean it's it's never the same thing. It's always a little different. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, that was fun. But it, it is twenty four hour shifts when you're there and kind of a weird mm-hmm. schedule. A lot of holidays you miss depending on how your schedule falls. And um, you know, after my last son was born, it just kinda felt like the right time to mm-hmm. move on. So it's so noble though. Yeah. You know, obviously police and fire critical. Yeah. Police gets all the bad <laughs> pub, right? Yeah. Um, 
Firefighters don't. They're just always heroes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you don't mess with a firefighter. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys run in to, into the fire. Yeah. Literally, yeah. you know, and that's that's noble. So thank you for that time. Well, thank you. you. Know? I appreciate that. Uh, well, then let's um, – briefly, let's just talk about school. I know you went to the University of Memphis in Northwest. What was your main study? Uh, honestly, it was it was a, a mixture of business courses. I ended up just getting an interdisciplinary uh, mm-hmm. studies degree. Um, I, when I finally got my bachelor's degree, it was a, um, a business degree with an emphasis in fire science. Um, oh, okay. And so I, I kind of finished. I had a couple of courses left when I was in um, in the fire department, and I finished those up mostly online mm-hmm. and. Um, that, that's kind of what that was. I, to be completely honest, I was pursuing the, um, the, the piece of paper. <laughs> so I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing about college, right? Yeah. You got to get that piece of paper and hope that you're not in debt for the next 20 years. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's know? right. Well, okay. Well, then now let's, let's jump to the business. Um, and uh, it was nine months ago we spoke, so sorry if I misremember, but I know that your father is involved with the story, correct? He is. So let's start there, you know, um, and how this b- business began. Yeah, so he honestly, in coordination with my grandfather, uh, back in the late 90s, um, he, he had been in different roles in construction for uh, several, you know, year, for really most of his life. He had done some framing. He had kicked in carpet and laid ceramic tile and mm-hmm. just different um, areas of construction. Um, but then in the late 90s, he and my grandfather started uh, doing some stuff together, um, doing some remodeling. Uh, purchasing, you know, some houses and flipping them and uh, just kind of getting his feet wet in that area. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, uh, they they did several of those renos and even built a couple of small houses. And then in 2001, Gustafson Properties was officially formed. And um, that's kind of where the the roots of that all, you know, began. What year again was that? What year? That was 2001 that okay. we, we were officially formed. So, wow, 22 years. Yeah, it's been yeah. a minute. <laughs> so you were what five then? Ah, no, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was in high school. So okay. that would have been. Uh, well, I graduated in 2004. So yeah. What was it? Was it? What was that experience like for you when you saw your dad start a business? Um, I've always admired my dad for mm-hmm. that, um, especially now as an adult. Um, I mean, it's definitely you have you have to take a chance and, and really risk it all. Mm-hmm. And, yes. um, and and my mom was a major factor in that as well. They both supported one another. Um, you know, he he kind of another thing that I didn't really mention. He uh, started out in real estate when he left his nine to five job and kind of went out on his own. He started in real estate and mm-hmm. uh, while he was kind of getting that built up and doing these renos and um, just doing some of this, you know, work that kind of ended up being the foundation for what would eventually become our company. Um, you know, my mom was handling, um, you know, books and, and continuing to, you know, work her job as well and stuff. So um, team effort, team effort, yeah. you know, and I think it, it you know, in the long run, kind of taught me a lot about marriage, you know, how you're oh, supposed to yeah. um, support your spouse and, um, and you know, kind of you're in it together. We hope your end. wife agrees. I hope she does, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's probably uh, been times she's doubted me. But, so. yeah, that's a real family business. Yeah. You know, and helping each other out, the yin to the yang, you know, yeah. focusing on their strengths in order to make it work. And then your mom was also working on another job, you said, <clears throat> and raising – yeah. You? And yeah. yeah. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. So, yeah, awesome. she had her hand full. Oh, hands yeah. Hands full, too. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, well, that's awesome. And you graduate, you go to school. You're fi- Is it after the fire department that you start? integrating into your family business or what's the what's the genesis and story of how you ended up joining it well and and so the family business has a little bit to do with leaving the fire department as well because um i i came into the picture around 2012 and i say came into the picture i mean um you know i grew up with it so 
Um, I'd always been in and out of Gustafson properties, you know, doing different things, learning different trades. Mm -hmm. Um, But in 2012, uh, my dad asked if I wanted to come and, you know, become a partner with him. And uh, so I, I, you know, that that was kind of my step in that direction. Um, And then um, we just kind of got a little bit busier. Obviously, my wife and I, like I said, we were, you know, having our boys and uh, it was getting busier at home. And so when the time came to split from the fire department, um, that was kind of a— This is what you jumped into. Yeah, this I was kind of doing it in— in coordination with the fire department for there's uh, an overlap for yeah a two to yeah. three years and then it Ooh, just that's kinda, a long time yeah yeah, yeah. And then it kind of got to the point where it was time uh, to just and pursue take, it wholeheartedly <laughs> take that chance i know that autumn immediately means you know uh drop in pay yeah but the, then the goal is to bring that business up to make up for it and then you're unlimited yeah. potential after that yeah so, absolutely so it was still you know business decisions are all risks in that way and uh yeah but I mean, two and a half years is a long time to overlap that. Yeah. And uh, so. Well, with the fire department, you, like I said, you can't leave. I mean, that's, uh, you're there for 24 hours. You have to be, you know, within running distance of those guys at all time. I mean, even if you're out jogging or something like that, you have to be able to get back to the station so that you can, you know, go to a call if if a tone drops. Um, And, you know, with building, it's kind of, you know, when when you reach certain phases of construction, there's clients that, you know, they want you to, um, you know, be there to, you know, if they have questions about something or whatever the case may be. So um, as we got busier and busier, uh, you know, you have to keep in mind, we were kind of rebuilding from the recession too. So um, Mm -hmm. as we began, began to build back up and everything that was, um, you know, it it just kind of got to be a little bit of a tension between times. So, yeah. And then it's time to move on and let's grow this thing. Yeah, that's right. So custom homes. Yeah. So um, I'm not familiar with, all of you know that space and that and that um, industry, but obviously that means you get a air quote for lack of a better term client, mm-hmm. and they say I want a home that looks like this, and yeah. then you just start from scratch and start designing it for them. Yeah, so is that um, how we, that works. Yeah, yeah, we work um, in in coordination with a couple of different architects, um, and and basically uh, that that's really where we've turned our focus over the last several years is uh, not just home building, but really trying to. Um, innovate the process okay. from beginning to end. When you talk to people about building a home, um, many of them um, will, will tell you it was a tough experience or it was a hard experience. And, you know, truthfully, it's a very long experience. You know, it's not mm. a transaction like you have when you go to purchase lunch or, yeah. you know, something like that. You know, yeah. I mean, you're dealing with somebody over the course of several months and so many different factors. And um, that's really where uh, our focus as we began to kind of rebuild from the the crash, um, we kind of started looking at ways we can, you know, m- make this a little bit more uh, enjoyable process for clients and um, and, and kind of what we could do to set expectations. Um, of course, you know, one of the big things that we focus in on uh, now is pre-construction, uh, which what is not... What does that mean? It, that's where you kind of start on the front end with your client. You do consultations and you uh, discuss the plans that they're looking at or that they're having custom drawn, what they're looking to have incorporated into their home, what's important to them, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to just getting a set of plans and... Uh, saying, you know, I, I want to build this and, okay, I'll build it for you for this much money and moving on and then uh, getting kind of, you know, caught off guard by a bunch of surprises. There's a, a heavier level of consultation on the front end. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and that's, that's uh, I think that's one thing right now that probably uh, sets us apart a little bit more. Um, but that that's really where our focus is, is because I, I think, you know, that helps to make things more enjoyable down the road if mm-hmm. everybody's kind of on the same page from the beginning like you said no surprises <clears throat> or at least you try to minimize and mitigate as many surprises yeah. as possible yeah you're always going to have some i'm sure yeah. but uh in, in uh from the customer's perspective they must feel more confident and comfortable knowing that y'all are on the same page yeah yeah i think so um mm-hmm. uh, i mean we've built a good reputation and um 
and you know I, I feel like when we finish with our clients it's it's uh yeah it's a it, it's been an enjoyable process so so how many houses do you think you build in a year is that average or uh right now we have been building about maybe eight seven to ten eight to ten something like that wow. um uh, being custom we're not really in a particular subdivision so mm-hmm. uh, that's something that you have to take into account too is you know as opposed to a production builder that may go in and drop you know 20 slabs and they're side by side mm-hmm. um, right now our custom homes stretch from um, we, we have a dart work that we're fixing to start in Lake Cormont and we also have a house in um, yeah. Holly Springs so um, you know what we what we build what we commit to uh, has a little bit to do with you know how that's you know how, how that's yeah. going to stretch across the county and everything. it's all standalone <clears throat> jobs yeah and uh which just takes more time and that custom but you know that strong relationship with the client yeah for sure it's not you guys aren't about just numbers and like how many houses can we sell in a year yeah like some people build these subdivisions and god love them for that too you know like yeah it's all if i was to buy a house that's where i'm buying my house <laughs> right i'm not going to be able to come to custom homes unless you cut me a good deal I yeah we'll talk later off of my yeah, no, yeah just for sure <laughs> but, but um uh, I, I did have a point there but yeah so it, it's, it would probably be one of those deals where you almost don't want too many in a year because that must just, just make too much to focus on and it would deplenish some of your yeah and, and honestly that's kind of um that's something we've been talking about a lot moving into 2023 and kind of making plans for um this next year and what it all entails is um you know we we don't want to get to um there's a there's a book i read by a chick-fil-a manager uh and i can't remember the name of the book now <clears throat> but um i think it's called it's my pleasure actually <laughs> but somewhere in there would make sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think it is but uh somewhere in there she talks about um um the founder uh who was it kathy truitt is that mm. is that right i don't know okay well it, she she was just saying that one thing that he said over and over again and it always stuck with me was uh we have to get better before we get bigger and yes. um and, and i thought that was really um a neat thing to hear from mm-hmm. a founder of such a renowned company um and, and i try to think about that when we're when i'm thinking yeah. in terms of my own business as well is um you know yeah we could you know we could reel in the lead and we could take on a lot of people and we could get rolling, you know, but uh, I, I really would like to try to, you know, hone in on this process and make things, make sure that we're not losing the quality mm-hmm. um, along the way and stuff. Yeah, so. and it's wise words, you know, as simple as it seems, yep. especially on paper. But, yeah, you know, you want to be prepared, grow that foundation. Some businesses can grow too fast and they yep. can't keep up. And then sometimes they can go make them go bankrupt. Yeah, you know, and, and that's a dangerous place to be. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like you have all this rev coming in, but your cash flow can't yeah. keep up. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So there's that factor too. So yeah. well, that's interesting. So um, I want to go over some uh, some awards. Um, you got certified graduate builder from the National Association of Home Builders. Tell us a little more about that. So uh, the Home Builder Association, or National Association of Home Builders, they have uh, different designations that are basically uh, kind of like certifications that you can get in other areas of work, um, such as the fire department becoming a certified firefighter. Um, you can take a builder's test and get your license and start building, but to acquire a um, designation through the Home Builder Association, that just shows that you've um, taken additional courses and you have a certain amount of experience as far as the length of time that you've been building mm-hmm. Um and that you're an active member of an association and stuff like that. And as part of trying to, you know, make a, a very good, enjoyable process and, and um, process that our clients can be confident in, one thing that we uh, continually try to integrate into our company is training. And so, you know, pursuing those designations uh, is is really important. Um, I 
received mine, I, I guess it was last year sometime. Um, my cousin who actually works with us as well, he's in the process of mm -hmm. working through his. Um, I have plans to pursue a graduate builder designation as well um, here soon, master graduate builder. Um, and, and moving forward, that's, you know, that's going to be a key part of, mm -hmm. you know, advancing within our company is, you know, getting those different designations. So designations is the term for that, like those little badges that you see at the bottom of your website, because you have several yes. down there. I only noted a couple. Yeah. But like, I mean, yeah, it totally brings in more credibility, right? Yeah. It's like a resume. Yeah. I, as the buyer, it would definitely give me confidence in you. Like, oh, okay, they take it for real. The training, you got to you got to keep up. I would yeah. gather there's coding stuff that you have to keep up with or whatever training it may be that's strengthening your service. You know, that's that's yeah. uh, that's that's nice. That's great. So the other one, or one of the other ones, was DeSoto's Best 2017. Was yeah. so is that a small business or you know a medium sized business award? Yeah, or? that was a home builder of the year. Um, I think if I remember correctly, okay. it's been yeah. a it's been a minute, but um, <laughs> but yeah, that was you know the DeSoto's Best. Um, award nomination and, and voting always mm -hmm. takes place. Uh, I think they start nominating in November or December and uh, start voting, and then results usually come out maybe February. I, I may have gotten that completely wrong, but <laughs> 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 hopefully not. It's but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty um, fun award um, yeah. process, voting process that they have every year in DeSoto County. So. Well, good for you. Yeah, thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. So let's uh, educate a little bit. There might be some people uh, watching or listening to this that um, would like to learn more in a way um, of how this works. So um, part of that, people like learning from other people's mistakes or struggles. Yeah. So I don't want to say mistake. That's a bad <laughs> word. Struggle. Yeah. Uh, there is no mistake, right? You just you get hit with different problems, and it's yeah. a journey to find those solutions, right? Yeah, yeah. What was one— it, you know, that first story that pops in your mind as that first, like, real challenge that you experienced within this business. Oh, man. There's a... <laughs> yeah, it's like asking <laughs> someone their favorite band or their favorite song. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, for instance, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not perfect and no one in the business is perfect. And, um, you know, success is lined with failure. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of failing forward. Yeah, brother. failing forward. That's all you're doing, man. <laughs> That's right. But, um, I mean, COVID was a huge, um, and, <sighs> You know, I know that's not the first one. That's just the first one that comes to mind. But sure, well, that's a big one. We can yeah. talk about it because I would gather. I mean, the supply chain was probably yeah your big deal. Yeah, it's so, economy too. But wood, well, wood didn't the price of wood just like skyrocket on you? Well, yeah, wood and um, you know, I mean, honestly, as a home builder, you're you try to keep people on budget, on schedule, and maintain quality. And what we saw with COVID was something we had never seen before and basically a deterioration of all of that mm -hmm. overnight. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't get products. Um, we we had, you know, lumber suppliers that at, you know, some points were telling us, you know, we, we don't have, you know, so many two by fours on the yard or something, which is really scary because that's a pretty essential ingredient of I your would, home, you know. I would think so. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, and then you have um, items like your windows and your, you know, cabinetry and stuff that got backlogged so far that mm. it started messing schedules up. So, um, but I mean, you can look at that from the negative angle or you can, you know, just kind of look at it as a learning experience. And um, I mean, for me, you know, if there was anything to learn out of that, it was, um, you know, you can never stop innovating. I mean, um, right. you got you never know what's coming. I mean, this it, it changed everything. And Good. Um, again, finding solutions to new problems. Yeah. A lot of these little mom and pop, you know, wing stops and uh, sandwich shops, they all had to go to curbside. Yeah. But, yeah. but now they know how to do it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah, that's the silver lining in that for yeah. sure. And for the first time, I found myself like doing Zoom meetings with potential uh, clients. Well, like, and it's I like, don't know, like <laughs> Skype. Yeah. How did you miss this? Skype, you were first. Yeah. yeah. You were the first platform, but that's Zoom right. just swooped right in and, and owned that market. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because I was already working on it too. You know, the Zoom is amazing for business conferencing. Like, I just had a meeting with one of my 
team members today and you can yeah. screen share and it's just my team's all over the country it's all remote so zoom just yeah. can connect you which which i love you know yeah, yeah it's an awesome platform i was fortunate in covid a business wise like people had time and money so podcasting was very popular yeah more popular than now there's a little peak yeah 2022 or 2021 is when i started losing yeah but um but personally i had just moved uh from memphis to olive branch as olive branch was sort of a stepping stone to here mm -hmm. um and i moved in january of 2020 and had to furnish this whole two-bedroom apartment from scratch yeah and thank god all my stuff came in because let's say I yeah. was a month behind on that. I could have been sleeping on my floor for months oh, yeah. before getting my couch or my bed or anything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it left nothing untouched. <laughs> exactly. It's just everything shut down. So I was grateful for that. And then, yeah. So forever now, my whole entire olive branch experience was all COVID, just staying inside. <laughs> <laughs> like, so. You probably don't like driving to olive branch anymore. So. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, I love olive branch. No, That's no, awesome. But uh, Hernando's better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Well, great. So, what's the future look like? Where do you where do you see this going over the next five years? Um, I, I'd like over the next um, five ten years to really start to build our team out. Um, like I said, uh, we were talking about things that we're doing. Um, you know, moving into this year, um, preparing for the homes that we have coming down the pipe, and um, as we. Uh, you know, start continue to grow and continue to strengthen. I, right now, we have a good team, but we know that, like you said, there's a scary. You know, growth is scary. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, we know that's coming. And and uh, honestly, I'm I'm hoping over the next five to ten years to grow our team and our uh, our our clientele. Um, Would it also grow together. regionally? Are you trying to? maybe increase the your your radius of coverage yeah yeah i mean i would like to see that i think right now we're in such a uh desirable location um i don't know yeah. i mean <laughs> yeah. I, i'm i mean i'm happy where we're yeah. at but you know maybe long-term goals yeah, yeah. hernando is certainly a hot spot right now for sure yeah that's why yeah. i'm so glad to be here you know, yeah i love it here um well that's awesome man look is there anything we're missing is there something that you would like to add about your business, uh, anything. I don't want to miss anything. Uh, you know? I mean, obviously, if you're looking to build a, a new custom home, we'd love the opportunity to speak with you. Um, you know, you can find all of our information on our website, like Derek was saying at the beginning of the podcast. Um, but, I mean, aside from that, um, Hernando is a great community, man. And I'm, um, I, I'm excited about being able to do this with you. And, uh, you know, I, I love listening to some of the other stories <clears throat> of people that have yeah. – uh, I was listening to, you know, Cedar Hill Farms. Uh, Robert Foster. Yeah. yeah. Good <laughs> I mean, story. And I, and I graduated with his brother. And, I mean, we, and, we're another, friends from way back. But, I mean, I didn't know a lot of the things that he was talking about. You another know? family business, generational family business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, for sure. Great story, and Robert was really nice to yeah. to let me uh, hang out over there and yeah, uh, yeah, set my gear up right in his <laughs> right in front of his counter, right in yeah. the main lobby. Um, well, great. I appreciate you listening and engaging with this podcast too, because that's definitely yeah. what can help grow yeah. this, and it, it's a win win for everybody. That's and right. This is hopefully going to be a win for you if 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 you get one person that says, "Hey." I heard you on the podcast, man. That's that's music to my ears, you know. Yeah, it yeah. helps, you know. This is more about story, but in, also as a way to promote this local business in this Her Hernando area. I mean, it's amazing how many businesses are here. Yeah, and it's I appreciate insane. you doing yeah. this on behalf of all the other businesses as Absolutely. well. It's uh, yeah. I mean, this it's it's an awesome area, man. I've I've lived here my whole life, and, and it's been just. Um, it, it's never seemed to have lost that small home, mm -hmm. small town feel. So, well, I've always said because uh, I'm in an apartment right now. You know, I want to pour concrete around these tent poles. Finally, <laughs> yeah, in, in my yeah. life. So maybe we can talk in a year and get half off custom yeah. home. <laughs> That's <about> right. That. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not saying bye yet, but I do want to talk to the audience here. We need to we need to okay. challenge the audience and kind of educate them on how to best support this podcast. So, yeah. um, first off. If you're watching or listening to this, thank you. Yep. And you've made it to the end. So yep. congratulations. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, so here are five ways to help support this podcast. Go to our website, 
number one, therealhernando.com. Click that subscribe button, top right-hand corner. All it's going to ask for is an email. And what that is for is you get email notifications for new episodes. Um, while on the uh, website, find an episode that you like, click into it, grab that URL, and share it with friends and family. Email. Throw it on your Facebook page. Uh, do stuff like that. That's usually helpful. Go to our YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Um, if you're only a listener, if you could, still just go subscribe to the channel. You don't even have to touch it again. But getting subscri- uh, subscribers is helpful. Uh, follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Stitcher. Leave us ratings and reviews. Uh, that's another great way. And then following us on our socials. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, all are at the real Hernando. And that's where it can get really powerful. Just share one of our posts to your story, to your feed, tag people, um, direct people to these posts. We post clips, you know, you get a few clips, uh, Brandon, on yeah. promoting this full episode too. So, you know, share, 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 sharing is caring. That's, it's really the, the key to this. And, um, but, uh, awesome. Brandon, yeah. it was a pleasure finally doing this with you. I'm glad that you made it over here and that we can, uh, you know, share your story. Yeah, I appreciate it, Derek. Yes, it's, been, it's been awesome. So. All right. Thanks, everybody.